Forensic psychology. Most people are familiar with the term forensics, or can at least affiliate the word with some sort of criminal involvement or some sort of workforce within law enforcement. In the same, uh, most people can relate to psychology or at least have some sort of understanding that it has to do with the study of the human mind. However, very few are aware of a career path that is criminal um, psychology being forensic psychology. Forensic psychology would be best described as being the blurred line between the criminal justice system with uh, the psychological aspect of it. Um, in short, it's psychology focusing on a human and part of criminal mind. Now, why is this relevant? My, many of you might say, I'm not going into psychology, I'm not going into law enforcement. What does that have to do with me? Crime is everywhere. Um, crime is a very real occurrence. And as a member of a society where there's new criminals that pop up every day, um, ranging from various different types of criminal infractions, I wanted to learn and I wanted to inform you of a little more of the background, of the behind the scenes that people aren't usually shown, um, if you would, the missing puzzle pieces between uh, sort of criminal part of crime scenes and what we don't get to see aside from just the police aspect. Learn about psychology, or the forensic psychology, will help us understand how much key important psych actually plays within the criminal justice system. First, I will just give a little background information of um, how forensic psychology came to be. And then I will discuss what is it that forensic psychologists are responsible for upholding in their workforce. In an article by Cherry Kendra, um, in psychology.about.com, published in, the two, in a 215 article last access on October 29, 215. She talks about one of the founding fathers of forensic psychology. One of the founding fathers being um, J. McKean Cattell. He was a professor at Columbia U and decided to do uh, experiments on his students in the sense of expert witnesses. In his experiment, he asked his uh, students a series of questions, and then he asked the students to rate on a degree of confidence that they felt uh, with their answer. The results that he collected were that they conducted a sign of, uh, they demonstrated inaccuracy within their responses, meaning that they had they second guessed themselves. Now, this was interesting not just in him. Uh, to McCattle, but it also piqued the interest of many other psychologists. Um, soon, psychologists such as William Stern started conducting their own experiments. William Stern conducted an experiment on witness call in which he had members in his classroom um, pair up and ask each other questions. And based on that, he asked them to then recollect what were the questions that they asked each other. What he came to under to, as a result, he noticed that emotions played a key toll in the recollection of uh, memories. Meaning, if they were more attached, they remember more. If they weren't too attached to them, or had very little interest, then they wouldn't recall much. This was accessed uh, in the same article from Cherry Kendra and the History of Forensic Psychology. On uh, psychology.about.com, last access on October 29, 2015. Now, going on our main point, now that I've, I've, I've kind of briefed you a little bit on the history of psychology, or forensic psychology, what is it exactly that they do? Psychologists, although over the years it's kind of been depicted with things like CSI or criminal minds, um, isn't necessarily the full picture of what you get from the actual job. 
one key thing to understand is that as a forensic psychologist, research is a key part of your career. You're constantly researching, studying, and analyzing other professors' works as well as your own. In said titles, um, forensic psychologists study the crime scenes and they do criminal profiling. They're also known as expert witnesses. Expert witnesses are called in courtrooms for, let's say, if someone um, is guilty of a charge and then pleads that are insane or says something is wrong with them mentally. In which case, they would call a forensic psychologist to come into the uh, courtroom and then give an evaluation of the accusee and um, and give a valid reason whether they are, they can be considered insane or not. Now, due to the, although you don't have a lot of physical um, stress on you as a physical, as a forensic psychologist, there is an immense amount of draining in you. You become immensely drained. Um, you're emotionally invested in uh, the courtroom and you're emotionally invested in the criminals that you're trying to profile. In which case, you become stressed out. Um, and you're drained emotionally and mentally uh, due to the amount of people that you're dealing with. Uh, forensic psychologists deal with child abuse cases, domestic violence cases, and even, um, what was the word? With people who plead that they're insane or psychotic. Although psychology is a relatively, forensic psychology is a relatively new uh, type of career path, the career path has recently come up in the recent years. Uh, it has continued to grow steadily for the past 10 years. In which case, um, having an annual estimated earnings of about 100,000 K isn't a bad career choice to take into consideration. 